Hello, and welcome to the Knit Guy Podcast. My name is Kat, and this is the podcast where I discuss knit crochet and a general addiction with yarn. Welcome. If you're new here, um, please feel free to like and subscribe. Um, I also have a Instagram account, it is homemade.by.cat. I have lots of reels, posts, stories, all that jazz going on. Um, I am much more consistent posting on there, which is surprising given I'm not very consistent. Um, yeah, sorry for not posting for a couple of weeks, guys. I literally nothing went on this time. Just fitting in time to film is really, really hard. But I am hoping that with like it going to fall, school starting, everything like it's gonna get back into routine. It's gonna be a lot easier. Um, also, not to mention my in-person days for Pilates teacher training are done. Um, still not, still on the road being survived, but. The main chunk of it is done. So, yeah. I do not know what's going on with the lighting today. today. Um, I kind of feel like I'm glowing. Sorry about that. Um, if I turn off this light or if I readjust it, everything looks gray. I don't know what's going on. Hopefully we can just manage with it. I'll just be glowing for an hour. Um, one sec, let me see what episode this is. I haven't filmed in so long, I don't remember what episode number this is. Mm. It is episode 20! Yay! Even number, how fun. Yes, well, welcome to episode 20. Um, if you have any questions for me, anything like that, leave them down below. Always happy to respond to comments. Also, here's just like a little prompt. Let me know what you're working on. Because I want to know, and then I maybe I can be working on it too. Whole community of ideas. How fun. Anyways, yeah. Do we want to get started for whips? I say we do. So actually, no. I want to start with finished objects. Finished objects, because we have those this week. First things first. Drum roll, please. Ta da! Also, I'm in kind of like a hyper mood, so sorry, I don't know what's going on with that either. Um, but finished object, how great, honestly. Um, I know, it's a swatch. This is not the finished object, but it is proof that it's a swatch for my finished object. Honestly, I've shown this in like every podcast. I'm just proud that I actually swatched. I've not blocked the swatch, but it's cotton. I don't know what, I don't think it'll do anything. So I'm intermediate advanced knitter, not pro because I don't block my swatches. The sweater. It is finished guys. Okay so the last time I showed this to you I think I explained how I was gonna have to cut back on the body and then add in the color work of the body. Um, I think you saw a sneak peek of it. Well, anyways let me show you from the bottom up the finished color work. Ta-da! The little poinsettias! And then I did a two by two ribbing. Um, it didn't work out too well because with cotton it doesn't exactly like go in. Uh, I think it, it it looks cute though. It's just like a drape down. Um, and this is cool because for my bind off, what I did here, basically, I've worked on this bind up a couple times. The first time I did it, I did um, the same bind up I do on my socks, which is like you knit it if it's a knit stitch, you purl it if it's a purl stitch, and then you knit the two stitches together. Um, I'll link the tutorial below that I used to learn this. It works really great for socks. Uh, it's what I used in my other sweater that I knit, the other flax sweater, but it kind of just makes it stretch out and looks kind of weird on a big sweater. Um, so I started looking up sewn bind offs and basically I literally just typed in sewn bind off and crazy sock ladies tutorial showed up and basically it just looks like a um, long tail cast on but it's a bind off and it's amazing. Doesn't matter what ribbing you're doing or if you're doing ribbing at all. Huge fan. Um, I did a little bit stretchy. And yeah. And the same thing on the sleeves here. Um yeah, I did color work on let me show proof of two sleeves. Two sleeves. Um basically I just did a little kitchen tile, that's what I called this last time because it just like speckled. Um and then the rib kitchen tile. Um I did an inch and a half of ribbing and then the bind off in the magenta color. But yeah, so the yarn I used for the sweater 
is Lion Brand 24-7 Cotton. And I'm a huge fan. This sweater turned out really great. Have not woven in ends or blocked it. But I'm gonna deal with that when I deal with that. I'm just happy it's done. So this is the flax sweater pattern. I did the short rows on top. First time ever doing sweater short rows. I think it worked out really well. Did my sleeves. And I know I talked about doing my sleeves, knitting two at a time. Um, I attempted it. Did not happen. I ended up just going back to one at a time and like I got them both done within a week. It was very fast, very easy. So yeah, this was my first time ever doing color work and I'm so impressed. I think they did it too um, tight because honestly it kind of, when you look at it all, it like goes in for the color work. So I'm hoping when I block it, I can kind of just like stretch it out, maybe like put it on something to dry. That way it's not just like six inches of tight ribbing at like the bottom. Because um, the first thing I'm knit, I knit this for, because it is a gift. If you don't know me, I'm a huge gift knitter. Basically everything I'm knitting at the moment, except for socks, is a gift. Um, and yeah. Normally the way I try and plan it is I try to do a lot of stuff for me in the beginning of the year. Um, I didn't get as much done as I hoped to because I started gifts in May. Um, it does not normally happen, but I, I kind of went a little crazy. Anyways, this is a gift. Um, I like knitting gifts, okay? <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm hoping I can just like stretch it over something to block it. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Yeah, so for size wise, I knit measurement wise the size small medium, but um, stitch wise I knit the medium large because my gauge was off. Because the this yarn is listed as a worsted weight yarn, it's a lot more like a decay weight, so I had to adjust the um, my stitch gauge to I think I just like went down a needle size to the large and big needles. I think you use like a size seven and a five instead of a eight and a six. Just because I didn't want it to be too too gapy. Like I want them to be able to wear it just with like basic undergarments and not have to like worry about it being see-through. So because like when you stretch it, it's kind of like that, but, but just clothing in general. So I think it's fine. <laughs> but yeah. This is the only proper gate swatch I've ever done, so I'm really proud of it. I just keep showing it to you. But yeah, I'm happy this is done. I'm happy. It's it's exciting. Plus, it looks so pretty. This almost makes me want to do more color work sweaters. Not enough to do like a full color work sweater. Well, I would love to wear one of those. I don't think I, that like that's in my mind space right now. Maybe next year. Maybe next year I'll just go with like full on like great aunt or like great grandma and just make everyone color work sweaters. Honestly, that would be kind of a fun. Like I'm kind of thinking like, that'd be a fun make along one year to do like a different color work sweater each month. And maybe not even as gifts, just like make them inspired as for the month. So like January would be like snowflakes, February could be hearts, March could be um, like for like clovers, April would be rain, like some kind of rain clouds because like April showers bring May flowers. This is this is how my brain works. When I see a month, I see photos of like, you know, stuff. Um, May would be flowers. Um, July could be like, um, sorry, June could be like summery things, like I don't know, like ice cream or something, like an ice cream cone. Okay, I need, I need to think of ideas. Because, like, not that I'm ever going to design a sweater pattern. But imagine if I did. And then I made this a make along. This is, like, years down the line, so don't get your hopes up. Um, I just like fun ideas. Also, if something like this does exist, please tell me. Because then I can just, like, take part in it and not have to do it. Like, create it. Dreams are fun. <laughs> Anyways, this is done. Finished object number two. It's like I'll put up my blockers. If you can't tell, there's socks. 
but I gotta put him on blockers first. So give me a minute. Oh, these look so cool on blockers. I haven't put them on blockers yet. I'm so happy. You'll see why in a minute. Okay, so these are my shorty socks that I was working on. Honestly, last time I showed these to you, I think I was planning to do like a waffle pattern, like color work style. Um, that went out the window, because like, I got really into the color work after I finished the sweater, and then I was like, you know what, no, I don't want to do color work. Um, so I tore those out, because also they were coming up the wrong size, and I quickly cast on them again, same toe up, as the blueberry waffle socks, because I want to do something textured. Um... So I don't have the wrapper with me, so I don't know what yarn is, but I'll link it down below. I got it on clearance at my local yarn store, just like a 50 gram cake. And yeah, so basically this pattern, you do the top stitches with the blue by waffle pattern, which is basically just like two rows of two by two ribbing, two rows of just straight knitting um, on repeat. Um, so my sock recipe for this was I cast on 10 stitches, I increased to, oh sorry, I cast on 20 stitches, I increased to 56 stitches, so 28 in each needle. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to do from now on, I'll talk about that in a sec though. Then I did 70 rows for my foot, because I have, the way my, t my toes are shaped, is my second toe is my longest toe. Um, and I always end up like scrunching it in my toe, in my socks, and like it's not comfortable. So I want to have space for it to like fully extend, you know. So I just need a longer foot. I did a German short row heel, which I'm actually kind of a fan of. I like how there's not as many holes. Like I haven't woven in ends or even like sewed up the holes, but I don't think I have to, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, then I did 12 rounds of the blueberry waffle pattern and eight rows of one by one twisted rib with my um, sock bind off right there. So yeah and here is I think this is a second one because the heel kind of ended up being a little more holy. I'm fine with it though. Again there's no holes to really have to sew up so I'm happy with that. Um, but basically yes getting back to the 56 stitches, I suppose, my normal 60 stitches. Checking time. Um, basically, most of the time, and I kind of started realizing this when I was knitting my March socks, which are like the purple ones. I'll post a photo here. Um, basically, my gauge was getting all off, and the toes ended up being like a lot wider because I did a looser gauge, then toe up. And then I tightened it back up and all of that. And then I realized, and I'm like, you know, there's like two options here to like fix it. I could, I mean, I guess there's three. I could keep just knitting in a tighter gauge, which is what I have been doing. Um, I could take down a needle side, which requires buying another needle, which I don't want to do right now. Um, or I could just go down like a, like a size and basically knit like a small instead of a small medium. So that's what I'm doing, and it worked out really great. I still have to remember to keep like not super loose tension with these, but I think they worked out really well. Because this is true fingering what you are. It's not like this was like a DK or a sport or something. Um, but I think it worked out well because it was just like, I could just keep a better tension, pay attention to it, and yeah. And now for my view of the German short row heel. Um, again, no holes. Modification I did, I did to this. Um, again, I'll link the video I used down below for it. Because basically you knit your, like, the first part of the short row, and then you knit two rounds straight knitting. Like, even doing this, you just follow the pattern right there. Then you finish off the heel. And basically what I did is when I did my two rounds, I picked up a stitch on each side. Um, on each round. So there was four extra stitches. And then I finished the heel, and when I went back around, my first two rounds were basically just to decrease those stitches. Um... And yeah, and I didn't I didn't decrease any further on these because they have the ribbing like they have the blueberry waffle sock 
pattern, which is basically ribbing, so it kind of just sucks it in. If it was just like a plain vanilla sock, I probably would have decreased four, like in the first four rounds. That way it was four stitches smaller than the foot, you know? Like, decrease the ones I added, and then decrease two more. That way it, like, sinks into your ankle. But yeah. It is hilarious, though, because I don't think I have big feet. I only wear a size 7.5 shoe. Um, but when I take these off the blockers, and I just, like, look at them, my sock is so long. <laughs> it's so silly. Why are my feet this, this big? And I've shown it to my sister, and she's like, are you knitting socks for, like, dad or something? Um, and I was like, no, these are for me. And she was like, I mean, I guess they would fit, like, width-wise, but they're so long. <laughs> and she was a size 7, so they're not even that, I don't know, they're just big and silly. But they fit me perfectly, so I guess I just do have bigger feet than I think. Yeah, if you want to know if you have big feet, try knitting yourself some socks. You'll find out. But yeah, they kind of peep off my blockers a little bit in the toe here, but that that's fine. I'm not about to make new blockers just to fit that. Try to get the powder even here. <laughs> yeah, the new socks. Nice. Um, so, yes, these are done. Now, we just have whips. Um, oh, I want to show you. I had a tiny bit of yarn left over. So basically, normally for just plain vanilla shorty socks, it takes 15 grams each sock. These took about 20 grams each sock, so I have about 10 grams left. Just this tiny little yarn. It's a wool, nylon, and silk blend. So not normally made for socks, but um, it, it's cozy and I like knitting socks, so socks it is. We'll see how it lasts. Um, but yes, going back to whips. Uh, well, I guess I still have a finished shop up here. Maybe still one of these blockers. I forgot I finished one of these. I, I should got the blocker, not the sock. <sighs> Brain. It's been a long day. I've been planning a bunch of um, Pilates classes today. Because I have to have so many hours of like basically privates teaching one on one, and I have to plan those. So that was today was the day to do that. Okay, slipper sock. Oh, this is glowing. <gasps> Can you even see? This isn't gonna go too well because it's glowing. <laughs> this is this is silly. It's glowing. One sec, I'm gonna turn the light off so it'll be kind of dark, but that way you can actually see what I knit. Okay, it's darker. It's still kind of glowing because my window, but it's a little bit better. So you can see here. Oh, that's a pointy toe. But that's an interestingly pointy toe. There we go. Fits better now. Okay. So basically, these I knit with about a DK fluffy yarn. Um, these are slipper socks, and basically it was funny because I cast these on right around the time Crazy Sock Lady was working on her DK sock pattern, and basically I was impatient, and she had already said it was going to be a free pattern because the first page I would have waited for it supported her, but since she said it was going to be a free pattern, I basically just started like zooming in on the Instagram photo and just like counting the stitches. <laughs> Because I, I know I'm a small now, because 56 stitches for a regular fingering weight sock is her small. Um, so I was just like, okay, this one, like, she said she cast on a small, so let's go to that post, and then just, like, count the stitches on the needle. Okay, 20 stitches on the needle, so I have to cast on 40 stitches. Okay. <laughs> Lots of math. I did these cuffed down, so I had about 14 rows of ribbing. I did a 45 row foot a German short heel, yet again, once again, no gaps, amazing. I did the same thing here where I increased two and then just decreased two. Um, I did about a 55 row foot and I decreased it down to eight stitches um, on each needle, that is. 
So extra long pointy toe to fit my foot. And these these actually are a little bit big on my feet. Um, as you can kind of see when I stretched all the way out, they were like super point. But I really like that for my slippers because that means that like if it is really cold, I can keep like my regular socks on underneath, like store-bought socks, and then put these on, and then they'll just be like super warm. But I can also like have the ability to just wear them as socks if it's like you know, not as warm. So suck. I'm gonna keep the lights off just while I like, talk about this. I'll turn it back on in a minute. I know it's really, really dark. But yeah, I have the next one cast on. I have not worked on this in a couple days because I've really just been working on my other projects, which were gifts. Um, but yeah, so again, 14 rounds of ribbing, cast off 40 stitches. I'm a little bit into the leg. So yeah, not too far. I'm knitting these on my US 3 um, High High Sharps 40 inch cord. Um, I bought this from my Musselberg. I ended up not liking it that much because it was getting bladders with the yarn I was using. But they work great for DK socks. So I already have like a lineup of ones I'm going to do. Um, I have two 50 gram skeins of this. I got it from someone's like D stash. I don't know the exact brand. Um, and I'm going to. Basically, this one, I think, used about 30 grams. Like, for the entire sock, 30 grams. 30, 35 grams, something like that. Each of these cakes is 50 grams. So, um, basically, I'm going to have use about, use this whole cake. I'll probably use, like, 10, 15 grams of the other. And then I'll have just enough to do... Um, either like the main section of a foot for heels toes and have like contrasting heels toes and cuff or um, do stripes with like another color being the main because I have a whole bunch of the same exact yarn in white. I have like three skeins of this. Um, I'm not going to make just white socks because that would be kind of silly. I'll probably use this for something else at some point, maybe like a stuffed animal. But basically I'm going to make a pair of these. And then it was funny. I was knitting these when my mom and dad were gone on their anniversary vacation. And I was watching my mom's dog, Rosie, and she basically nuzzled up next to me when I was knitting this one. And she just started sniffing it and rubbing her face up against it like a cat, um, like on the yarn. And I was like, are you saying mom needs socks like this now so you can rub against her feet? Because that's what she does normally, just like now she has more reason to. Um, and she looked at me. And she just blinked, and then she walked away. And I took that as a yes. Um, so I immediately texted my mom with a photo of these socks, and I'm like, just so you know, Rosie's picked out a pair of these socks. Um, and as much as I would just like to give her these, um, I mean, A, I don't want to because I want these. <laughs> but B, for her, I do a heel flap and gusset. So basically, when I do a striped pair, I'm going to give her the striped pair with the heel flap and gusset. Um... And then, also a smaller foot size, because her, for, for her foot, I normally only do, like, for um, fingering weight socks, 55 rows, so she'd only probably be six, sorry, 50 rows about with this. I'm um, probably just going to decrease down to 10 stitches. But yes. And then I think, I need to talk to my sister about, like, how much she would like, like, if she would like more pairs of socks, because she has, like, one or two. Um, and she's told me she doesn't wear them much because she doesn't want to, like, get holes in them, which just totally makes sense. But, like, if she wouldn't wear, like, it, I don't know if she'd want more. If she does, though, I'm probably going to make her some out of this. Because the funny thing is, we originally bought this on clearance at Hobby Lobby. Um, it's like a discontinued color. But we originally got it to make a dog sweater for her dog, Teddy, who's like a really tiny little three-pound thing. Um, and this is all the leftover. So basically, her and Teddy could have, like, she could have socks that match her sweater. You know? Cuteness. Um, but yeah, if she hasn't won it, I'll take it. I will happily match Teddy's sweater. But I just thought that would be so cute, so we have to offer it to her. So yes. Lights going back on. Voila, we have light. Okay, we're doing good in time. 
for more whips. So this is my big project that I've cast on since my sweater was finished. Um, if basically I kind of try and follow, oh I'm blowing again, how fun. Uh, basically I try and follow Nitty Natty's like three whips at a time gauge. So you have your one, which is like a big project, which for me is a sweater or a shawl, something of that sort that's like big, requires my long needles. Um, then you have socks. For her, basically socks fits in the category of travel. Um, for me, socks is socks because socks are amazing. How many more times can I say socks in a sentence? Um, but really, I don't, I never really take socks for travel unless like I know I'm going to get to sit down somewhere. Just because I'd rather, I mean, I'm going to have a lot of muscle bergs on my needles basically until the end of the year. And that's my travel knitting because it's just round and round and I don't have to look at it. Whereas with my socks, I knit magic loop. So you kind of do have to look and then you have to watch your tension for ladders and it's a process. So that's more of my, when I'm on break from my big project thing. So like I alternate the two. Um, so yeah, so I had to cast on something big. This is my sweater, or sorry, my shawl. It's another rainer shawl. This is for another friend of mine. Is this the front or the back? Oh, I have no idea. No, this is the back, okay. Here's the front. Voila. It's so pretty and soft. Um, this is using the Yarn Bee yarn from Hobby Lobby. It's the Soft and Sleek DK, but it is most certainly a um, fingering weight yarn, and it is the softest fingering weight yarn you will ever find that is acrylic. Um, like, honestly, it is amazing. The best purchase I've ever made. It's like six bucks totally worth it. Um, go grab it now if you like knitting with fingering weight yarn because it works amazing. Honestly, I want to make a sweater out of it. I just like, I just buy a bunch of yarns when you like not buy more yarn. Um, but next time I buy yarn, it's going to be this for sweater quantity. But yeah, so I've already knit one of these ring of shawls and I already gifted it away. So here's my second. Basically just like a really simple one skein shawl pattern. It alternates garter and this cool mesh. Um, and it's really fun and simple. Basically, I only have two more garter panels and one more mesh panel. I'm probably gonna just add another mesh and another garter onto that because I really want it to be nice and big. And I remember the last time, it ended up being kind of small. And I, excuse me, I have the yarn to use, so I want to make this like a really nice, big, like almost blankety shawl. Because it's big, it's your basic triangle shawl. Um, and it is a free pattern, I'll have it linked below, but basically like you start off with two garter, like two mesh things, and then you have four mesh things, and then I have eight mesh things. The next one's going to be 16 mesh things. Basically I'm probably just going to go to a 32 mesh things, which is like giant. Um, close it off with a double garter, with like a, a doubled garter panel. So normally it's eight rows of garter, probably do 16 just to close it off, and then um, it doesn't specify a bind off. Last time I did like a knit bind off. I think I'm gonna try an eye cord bind off. I've never done it, but I think it would just like look so cool and have like such a nice touch on this. Um, so why not? Yeah, I literally cast this on probably last Thursday, um, and it's Tuesday. So like six days, honestly not like bad. I have a lot of work. It's already outgrowing the needles, so that's always a good sign, and um, it's getting very long to do rows. Like this morning, I knit for like an hour and 20 minutes. I only got like maybe three rounds in, given, or sorry, four, six rounds in. Given like four of those were mesh, so they do take a little bit longer because you're like knitting the pattern, um, the other two were garter, but that's still like not a lot of rows for that length of time, but again, I'm not complaining. I knew what I was getting myself into when I was knitting a shawl, um, and I'm just excited. I ha I'm having to convince myself to give it to this friend and not steal it for myself because it's so soft and squishy. Um, I am giving it to the friend. I'm not going to steal their gift, but I'm thinking about it. I'm not going to the door. And my last whip at the moment is the Musclebird Cat. 
it's growing. Um, it actually is really nice because up until now I assumed I had a 12 row per inch gauge. Um, that was kind of hell. Not fun. Have you ever tried knitting light fingering weight where you have to knit, I mean any weight, specifically light fingering though, where you have to knit 12 rows per inch for 20 inches. Um, with like 200 something stitches on your needles. Not fun. Um, <laughs> I'm not complaining because like it is like, it is fun. It's really soft. I'm excited to give it to this person. But it is a labor of love, as people call it. But exciting news. I measured again because I was like, there's no way this is only like 12 and like 10 inches. Um, turns out I have a 10 row per inch gauge. So I just like grew this thing like three inches just by like adjusting it. Um, so it's now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm working on the 16th inch already. So I have like 15 and a half inches here. It's amazing. Um, yeah, so I've started knitting this in, at night. Um, because this, well, it is my travel knitting. I'm not really going anywhere lately where, like, I have to knit. Like, I take it to church with me because we sit in the balcony and then I just go to, like, knit through the sermon and all that. But, like, I don't really go anywhere. And if I do, it's like, I'm going to a Pilates class. I'm going to observe a Pilates class. You can't exactly knit while taking notes, you know? Um... So I, it's become my TV knitting because my shawl, I recently had a lot of time just working on it in the morning so I don't have to save time for it in the evenings, which is nice. Um, and yeah. There we go. If you don't, um, I think I might mention this. This is the Musselberg hat pattern um, by Isolde Teague. It is a paid for pattern, but it is amazing. Love it. This is my third, fourth one that I'm doing. Um, the others were not as strenuous because I used actual fingering weight, not light fingering weight, but I'm using what I got left. Um, so you do what you gotta do, but yeah, I have about like six others I want to make. At least four. I don't know the exact number. Um, but yeah, it's an excellent pattern. Great for gift knitting. Um, great if you just want some like giant sock vanilla knitting. It's amazing. Cannot recommend it more. So, I will link that down below. Please go check it out. Um, and now I have two acquisitions. The first Okay, so basically the story behind this, I was not going to buy any more yarn after I bought these two and let Super Clearance at my local yarn store yarn over. I was like, you know what, like, this was like $25, it was half off, so like I had to get it, but I'm just not going to buy yarn for a while because like, you know, I don't need it, I have uh, lots of other yarn, I'm trying to save money, all that. Um, but then they like sent out an email saying they put the bags on like a more clearance. Um, at first, I was like, you know, you don't have to, it's fine, move on. Um, but then I was like, well, if I don't get it now, I'm going to regret it. So I had to go. Um, and I mean, I'm glad I went. These two, 50 gram balls, um, five bucks. Fingering weight. Um, I believe it's a, yeah, they're 50 grams. It's 70% wool, 25% Palmide and like 5% other acrylics, basically. Um, I've already decided I'm gonna make a sweater, a sorry, not a sweater, this is not sweater's quantity. A, um, I'm gonna use this for a gift and make another shawl out of it. Cause I was going to use, um, some other yarn I have to make a shawl, but I was kind of, it was gonna be like two yarns together and I was like, you know, I don't know how I'm gonna like match this. Um, and then I was like, you know what, this color fits the person so much better. It's this color. Um, but yeah, if you want to know the brand, this is it. Um, yeah. And these were each originally five twenty, so in a bag of five dollars. Great fun. Now, but yeah, basically with that, they just are making room for their fall yarns. So, 
um, which is kind of dangerous because that means that like, yes, they're having a super sale now, but they're going to have new urine soon. It was also really funny because like I knew when I was going there, I have another bag I bought, but this was $5 and I like basically immediately picked it up and I was just carrying it around with me like, you know what, I don't know what else I'm getting, but I'm taking this because it's really good urine for $5 and I was like, I'm making a shawl out of it. It's happening. Um, and then I ended up walking away from the clearance yarns and like into like actual like fun like full price indie dyed yarns. Um, and I like had a skein in my hand and I, I basically it just jumped out of me and like you know what I have to get it. It's only $20 which is like pretty cheap for indie dyed yarn. Um, like you know what I need it. Like it's, it's happening. Like $5, a really nice skein of really pretty yarn. I was convincing myself but then I was like, I don't need to spend $25. <laughs> I don't need to. Um, plus tax and all of that. And I did not need to. Um, so I put that back and I went back to looking at clearance. Um, I can always go back for that because like they always have their full price yarn. And their um, local dyers that they keep there don't normally change that often. I had seen that one before, so... I, it's not the end of the world, but I almost got it. But yeah, so these are cool. Um, to make a really nice shawl. Because, um, of course, I went in there looking for sock yarn, but, like, the majority of what they have is bulky and worsted and DK. And, like, I have a bunch of DK. I don't need any more worsted, because if I'm going to go for worsted, um, I'm probably just going to use acrylic, because it's cheaper. Um... And I don't normally, like, make things with worsted. I normally will, like, knit with, like, my nice fingering yarn. But I didn't really have that much. And what they did was only on, like, a, like, 25% sale. Like, it was more than I was looking to spend. Um, but anyways, they had this bag. Ta-da. Um, there was four 50-gram balls in here. And altogether, this was $15. So... It is a cotton silk DK blend, but again, it's one of those DKs that's basically fingering. Um, and I'm honestly thinking there's not, it's not a sweater's quality, it's not really even a t-shirt quality. So I'm going to put this yarn off and I'm going to do one of two things. Either, um, it's going to be put off until gift knitting regardless. So I'm going to put this off and either in like the new year, I may end up getting like a skein of mohair. And I may make the rocket tee, because this is enough of, like, the basic yarn, and then just add, like, the mohair to it, and it would be perfect. Or, um, I will just basically make, like, a tank top out of it, um, because I do have enough for that. Just some kind of, like, flowy tank toppy thing with, like, spaghetti straps, so. But yeah, I don't know if I showed you the brand. This one kind of peeled off. Yeah, that, sorry, it kind of glows. I think that's like subtle, subtle me? I'm not really sure. It is 75% cotton, 25% silk though, so lots of fun. Plus I love that bright color, it's just so fun. So, yes, that is all of my knitting for this week. Um, things going on in life. Um, yeah, by the way, if you just were here for the knitting, feel free to go, maybe hit the like button on your way out. Um, but yeah, there's no pressure to stay here for life, but if you are, welcome to staying. Um, basically, nothing really that much has gone on since last podcast. As I said, I um, finished my in-person days for my teacher training. Uh, if you don't know anything about that, if you're new here, um, I'm in the process of getting certified for being a plies instructor, so I have to do like in-person days, I have a whole bunch of like observation, teaching, other hours I have to fulfill, but the in-person days of like them telling you about it and like practice teaching that clump is done. So now I'm kind of just like free. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, as I said, I've been doing my practice teaching hours, which is basically like one-on-one privates. 
Um, so I've been trying to get in the routine of like, I'll spend one day each week sitting and planning all of my privates for that week. So then I can just like go and do them, I make adjustments as I go. Um, yeah, it, it's been a lot. It's been a busy, busy couple weeks, which is why I have not filmed. Though I'm hoping, like I have everything else planned. Tuesdays is normally just like my appointment day. I may have like a practice teaching session. Um, but I really want to make like Tuesdays my day to film, edit, produce, all of that. So then I just have to upload it on Thursdays, which is normally a busy day. So, yes. Whew. Anyways, that was a lot. Um, oh. A lot. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I think that is it. Um, if you'd like to see more of me, as I say, I do have an Instagram account. It is homemade.by.cat. I also have a Ravelry, homemade by cat. No dots. Um, I am still looking at making a Ravelry group. I've got three people inter interested at the moment. I just need like seven more to make the thing. And then we can have like fun make-alongs and such. You know, all of that jazz. Um, you can also just have like, a chatter, question, and answer thread. Whatever you want, give me ideas. If you're one of the three people I've that said you're interested, give me ideas down below, of, like what we could do when this becomes a thing. Give people more incentive to join, or like say they want to join, you know? Oh yeah, you, you get the point. Um, but yeah, I'll start, I'll, we'll, bleh. I will stop rambling and let you go. So have a great day. I hope you get lots of knitting yarny time in. Um, or, I mean, if you don't like knitting, you're just here to hear my beautiful voice, that, that, that's cool too. Um, I don't know why, but I guess people have what they like. <laughs> yeah, so have a great day, and I will hopefully see you next week. So, bye!